Good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful Friday and an extra exciting day because this coming Tuesday is an event that we have been working on for over, well, for a year since the last gather and so. And Chelsea Manley from the Food Bank is here to tell us all about it. And one of our favorite chefs, fabulous person, some of the best food I've ever had in Colorado from Black Belly, Hosea Rosenberg, who I guess I've known you a pretty long time, is here too. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you. It looks like a beautiful, not too hot day. Chelsea. Let's start with you. Just give a little idea of what this event is doing, because I don't think people realize how great the Food Bank of the Rockies is. Yeah, we do really great work, and I'm I'm proud to work here. Um, Gather and Sew is our largest fundraiser. It's a farm-to-table dinner that we're having at Denver Botanic Gardens next Tuesday, September 17th. Um, and all of the proceeds that we raise at this event go to our hunger relief efforts. Um, so we are doing 179,000 meals to our neighbors experiencing hunger every week. Um, and you oh, know, well, every week or every day? It's every week. Um, oh, it's every day, Gabby. You're right. Okay, because that's what you said. Better than I do. Okay. Yeah, it's every week. So we've done 43 every million day. meals so far this year, every day. <laughs> Sometimes the numbers are so big that I have a hard time. And I think that, you know, being at the food bank, taking a tour, volunteering in any of our areas really help you grasp the scale of all of this because we are a distributor. So all of this food is going out um, to our over 800 hunger relief partners. Um, and that's how we're getting the food out to the community. So it's a huge warehouse space and we're doing 179,000 meals a day. Okay, I remember because I asked because too many people said to me, you couldn't, you're wrong. And I'm usually wrong, but I wasn't. You're always right about those numbers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and you'll take care of the, another interesting part of this before we go on is people seem to think to me when they talk to me, that hunger relief is only for somebody who has no money. But you take care of people who can't get out and kids in school. It's not like it's handing it's out free food for the very, very needy poverty people. Um, you know, I think that there are a lot of people who we don't think fall into a category of experiencing food insecurity, and it's one in nine people in Colorado, um, which is a, a, a lot of people, and it's people who are falling behind on their rent, and they're having to make really hard decisions, or they have these medical bills coming in um, through something that they experienced, and they're just not able to make ends meet, and again, they're having to make really tough decisions between keeping their house, paying these bills, um, accumulating interest, keeping their kids in a sport. Um, you know, we don't want people to have to face those types of decisions. We would prefer them to come and supplement with um, what we have in order to make ends meet. Yeah, because I think they do a lot more than people realize. Now, on another subject, good morning, Hosea, again. Good morning, Gabby. Thanks for having me. Uh, anytime. Okay, tell us all sorts of Michelin star record things this week. Yay again. You were so well deserved. But tell us about Black Belly. All right. Well, I'm in Black Belly Restaurant right now. This is the the dinner side, we have two, two separate sides to Black Belly here in Boulder. Uh, this is dinner only. This is the big open kitchen behind me. The chef's already here starting to prep. Um, next door is our market and butcher shop. And uh, they're open currently with lots and lots of people over there. Um, so we're celebrating, not only did we win our second green Michelin star this week, uh, we were also both Black Belly and Santo, my other restaurant, were on the Michelin recommended uh, restaurant list. And there's only seven recommended restaurants in Boulder, and we we have two of them. 
and there's only four green stars in all of Colorado and we got one of them. So big, uh, you know, big feather in our cap here. Everybody's very proud of the work and I think well-deserved. It's just amazing to get that recognition. Uh, but also in two months, we will be celebrating our 10 year anniversary of being open here at Black Belly. And to me, that's a big milestone because as most people out there these days know, restaurants are um, hard and it's notoriously a tough business and most restaurants don't make it past a few years. So to be celebrating 10 and in, uh, you know, being being honored with such cool recognition is, is just a, a great thing right now for us. So we're really we're all very proud of all the all the accolades we've received lately. Well, it's so much so and. I think both Chelsea and I thank you and all the other chefs who are great enough and nice enough to join us because I don't care what your restaurant is. I know you're having a hard time between minimum wage, labor, food, all of this going on. It, it doesn't matter if you're packed. It's still very, very hard. Yeah, I um I often tell people that that just because a restaurant's busy does not mean it's successful. Uh it's 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 amazing how thin the margins are in this business and they keep getting harder to hit. So, you know, we're we're overjoyed if we're over 5% bottom line profit, which in a lot of industries is is like you're failing, you know. And so for us to that that means for every dollar someone spends, we're lucky if we make five cents on it. And and I don't think a lot of people out there really understand the economics of restaurants, especially those that complain about menu prices and 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 fees and that sort of thing. And we're just trying to stay open and feed our our employees and our guests and make sure that our our staff has a living wage. And um, you know, I could I could spend hours talking about this, but all to say there's a lot of people out there really working their tails off just to make sure that they can be open for another month. Wow. And Chelsea, we are very lucky here. You are part of the big event at the Botanic Gardens, and you are making one of our appetizers. Tell us about it. But don't take a drink while I ask a stupid question. Well, I want to chime in too, though, and just say, like, it, it just speaks so highly of all of you who are involved in this community work. And I know you do more than this event too, Hosea, and a lot of our chefs that participate do. So to take time out of your day and and do this knowing that, you know, all of all of the funds that we're raising um, are are going back into the community is huge. Um, so thank you for for being willing to do this event with us. Of course. Well, there's there's two reasons I'm doing it. The first is the the young lady who's our host today. Uh, anytime Pat Miller asks me to do something, I'll be there as long as I can. Um, I second, really make me cry. Uh, <laughs> um we, as you know, it's it's an interesting thing because restaurants, uh, I can speak personally about this 10 years being in business um, and being in the industry for most of my life, we get asked almost on a daily basis to make donations, to host fundraisers, to donate food and donate our time. And that is tough because we don't make much money in restaurants and people think that we can, you know, it's just food, it's easy to give away. So it's really hard for us to say yes to a lot of things. So over the years, I've sort of developed a, a few buckets that we will focus in on. I'd rather give more to uh, certain really important organizations in my mind and my heart than try to spread it out and give everybody $10. So things that involve hunger, things that involve children, and things that involve um, cancer. And those are all things that are, you know, I think we can all relate to. We probably all have people in our lives that uh, that have dealt with cancer or have children or know someone who has struggled with food security. So to me, those are three of the biggest things that we'll be involved with. And so in this case, um, you know, I was just, before we went on live, I was talking about how hard it is to get my seven-year-old daughter to eat breakfast or lunch on time. And we, you know, we're like those crazy parents who are like, you know, there's lots of hungry kids out there. I wish she could come and work at the food bank one of these days so she can see firsthand like how important it is to to feed people and that that we shouldn't be wasteful and we should always make sure that everyone around us is is eating well but anyway I, it's an honor to be part of it i'm happy to help this is one of the ways that i feel like i can contribute greatly to our community 
with is with food and with helping to raise money. And so I could feed people out of this restaurant, but we would probably run out of money after a couple of days doing that, or we can help raise lots of money to feed a lot more people. And that's where I think restaurants and chefs can, can be the most impactful is helping raise a lot of money. Well, Chelsea moved me terribly. And the three things that you just mentioned are the three things that are most important to me. And I would add Parkinson's only because mm. my husband had it, but the others are the most important. And I feel none of us can ask everybody every day and whatever anybody gives is great, but you, ha I understand you're being asked constantly. Yeah. And there, there's a number of other organizations we're involved with. Those are just sort of the big three for us. Right. Yeah. Oh, anything anybody does. I think it's appreciated, but you're doing a lamb tatar. Yes. Um, so Black Belly is a um, a restaurant named after a breed of sheep, a lamb. So we we often work with the uh, American Lamb Board, and in this case, um, Superior Farms, who are based they're based out of Denver. They're kind of a, a collection of of farms, but they donated some lamb to us. Um, that we can use for this event. So um, I wanted to give them a little shout out that we're using uh, Superior Farms and we just love lamb and it's something that we we serve here all the time. And so I was originally going to do beef tartare, but I ended up hooking up with the lamb guys. So um, I thought I thought it was a more appropriate dish. So we'll be doing lamb tartare on our uh, fresh baked focaccia. We have a wonderful bread program here. We make fresh bread every day. So we're going to be bringing these little focaccia bites with with lamb tartare and some cured egg yolk and horseradish. Oh, I'm hungry. Can we practice now? Sure, it's good for breakfast too, yeah. I have anything with an egg goes anytime. Yeah. Chelsea, what other, do you wanna just sort of tell people the other restaurants that will participate? And then we're gonna find out a little bit more about black, well, let's do black finish with black belly first. What's coming up, new menu items, everything on your menu is incredible, but nobody makes chicken like you do. <laughs> um, well, our menu is always evolving here. We work with a lot of local ranchers and farmers. Uh, we try to be hyper seasonal. Um, so we're sort of shifting from summer into fall right now. We're kind of ending our, like the corn and the peaches and some of those ingredients are going away. And now we're shifting into like, winter squash and um, more like hearty greens, kales and brassicas and things like that. Um, we do more braised meats in the fall and winter. So lamb shank and um, we have a lot of homemade pastas on our menu that have really taken off. So we we're always evolving the pasta program too. So there'll be a week where our menu will change multiple times in a single week. Um, and we have all these butcher cuts from Kelly and the butcher team next door that, that bring over. So our, our, you know, our core menu sort of is, is based around meat and, and seasonal vegetables, but the physical menu is changing almost on a daily basis, but we love fall. I love, I love the ingredients that come out this time of year. So looking forward to some new stuff. It sounds divine. And maybe Chelsea or driving will get up there very soon. I would love that. Yeah. And, and Santo is your other restaurant in Boulder, which is also great. I think they should know. Yeah, uh, I was born and raised in Taos, New Mexico, and it's the food I was raised eating. So it's the food that reminds me of home. It's more like soul food to me. Um, lots of green chili and blue corn and enchiladas and tacos and things like that. The menu there doesn't change very often. We have a few seasonal dishes that rotate, but the core menu is always always kind of these these tried and true recipes like our, our enchiladas with green and red chili. Um, and now, Pat, I don't know if you know this, but we're opening a Santo at DIA soon. We wow. actually are starting construction right now, and we should be open sometime like late spring, early summer of 2025. We'll be in the C terminal, the south, like where the Southwest Airlines are. Um, so we'll be, yeah, just down the just down the hallway from Route Down on in the C terminal of DIA. We'll have a Santo. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about that. I guess now I have to start traveling. Or they ought to open the airport to all of us who are living here because you've got more fun restaurants to get to there. Yeah. 
not so, but they just won't let us. Chelsea, tell me, uh, let's give people an idea of who else is coming. Are tickets still available? We are actually sold out, which is really exciting. Um, so we are sold out at 250 guests, but um, you know we already have a date for next year. It's September 18th. So if anyone is interested in just getting on that wait list early and getting the information first, I'm always happy to do that. Is there a cancellation list? We do not have a cancellation list right now um, because we do have a small wait list of some of our donors who um, are just already in the queue for that. So, Oh, my God. Good for us. I'm thrilled. But you know what? The people are going to have the most fun time, most exciting. I yeah. think it's going to be a beautiful day there. So for a happy hour, which is from five to six, um, Black Billy is in good company. Um, we have really incredible local chefs coming oh. out for this. We have AE, AC Eat Serve um, is doing an appetizer during happy hour. Fish and beer, um, Spuntino and Tai Tai will all be there. We also have bars set up. You can enjoy the venue, walk around with a cocktail. Um, it's going to be really, really nice. And then for our program, we have a four course plated dinner um, that is going to be served by River and Woods, Daniel Asher. Um, Fruition Restaurant is doing the second course. Uh, Daryl Trua at Barolo is doing the main. And then of course, D-Bar um, is doing our dessert for the evening. Well, I'm thrilled we're sold out in its Denver Botanic Gardens and Sorry, guys, you can't come, but you can stand outside and wave and bring you a snack. I'll walk over. Next, next year. <laughs> yeah, well, we, good for good for everybody. That's fabulous. Give us Black Billy and Santos hours, too. Yeah, so here at Black Billy, and, and we also have a Black Belly in Denver now, a very Which small we part. love, of by the way. Oh, good. Thank you. And. There. Since the last time we talked, we now do catering as well out of there. We have packages that people can order for their office or home. And, and we have uh, delivery services now as well. So all that has happened since the last time I was on your show. Uh, but Black, I'll start there because that's the easiest. Black Billy Denver is on Tennyson Street and 41st. We're in the Berkeley neighborhood. Uh, there's a lot of cool little shops and restaurants in that area right by a park. Um, so there it's very, very small. We only do breakfast and lunch out of the shop. Uh, our hours are 7 a.m. till 4 p.m. And we have a uh, butcher operation. So we, you can get your cured meats and your fresh meats. And we have wine for sale and all sorts of picnic goods. So we, we make our fresh bread there. We have cookies and pastas and lots of house-made products, bone I mean, broth. Yeah, you had pickles and soups. Yep. I mean, it's really got great stuff. Don't undersell yourself. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, we're really trying to leverage the market side of that. We're we're in a cool little neighborhood and we don't have a big dining area. So we have an amazing breakfast and lunch, but we're really trying to leverage lots of homemade goods that people can take home. So we just started getting, um, it'll start next week. We're going to have farm fresh eggs and milk. So we have our bacon, bread, milk, eggs, charcuterie, beer, wine, everything you need for a good day. Um, so that's, that's what's going on in Denver here in Boulder. This side is the side I'm sitting on is our dinner restaurant and we we open at four o'clock clock seven days a week and uh, reservations are recommended we get quite full most nights we also have a beautiful new private dining room like there's people in there right now but uh we have an event room if, if, if that seats up to 32 people so if anyone ever is looking for a private space they can rent out our private room and have their own event uh we recently had our first wedding here which was quite fun they rented out the entire restaurant and used our private dining room as a dance floor and that was quite that was fun quite exciting oh. <laughs> bit 150 people in here for a wedding which it was crazy i probably shouldn't say that um yeah. anyway uh, uh then the the market side is breakfast and lunch and a butcher shop so we have breakfast burritos sandwiches soup salads lots of charcuterie cheese wine beer uh, again very like very much like what we do in denver a lot of like kind of picnic supplies or market supplies so we have fresh eggs and milk and and a lot of cool items for sale. And our and our whole animal butchery is located here. So we bring in locally raised lamb, pigs, cow, chicken, duck, all sorts of animals, and we break them down. And so we have everything from fresh, fresh premium dry aged beef steaks 
to the sausages to hamburgers to everything in between. Um, so it's it's quite the operation here in Boulder. And then Santo, oh, sorry, I didn't say the hours. At the market, we open at 7 a.m. and close at 5 p.m. here in Boulder. Six, sorry, 6 p.m., my bad. Um, and then Santo, my other restaurant here in town, we also do breakfast, lunch, and dinner over there. So we're open from 7 a.m. until about 9 p.m. We don't have an official closing time. We just close when people stop coming in. Uh, but it's it's in a neighborhood and it's not super rowdy late at night. So usually by nine, we're pretty quiet over there and we start winding it down. But um, Santo and Black Belly here in Boulder are open seven days a week. And in Denver, we're closed on Mondays. When do you rest? Well, I've got a great team, Gabby. I've got a lot of people to work for me and great chefs and managers. And I eat dinner at home with my daughter most nights of the week now. I'm not a young chef like some of these guys in their 20s that can just crank for 12 hours straight i uh i get tired i turned 50 last year and i um okay. <laughs> well i can't keep up on the line anymore let, let me just say that so i luckily i've built a company big enough to where i can i can afford to pay people to do the job so i can oversee and make sure the lights are on and everybody's got what they need but i uh you know i give a lot of direction i still cook but I, I do more, you know, like this event on Tuesday, I'll be cooking and they're at the fundraiser, but I have a team here that can run the restaurant. So I don't have to be here. Uh, Chelsea, I'm sure you won't mind being that gather and so is sold out. Give yourself a plug for Sophie's neighborhood. Um, sure. So Sophie is my seven-year-old daughter, our only child. Um, she's she's the light of my life. She's the whole reason I do anything anymore. Um, and when she was very young, before she had her second birthday, she wasn't walking and she seemed to be in a lot of pain. And my wife and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And she had had a number of tests done even before she was born. We had genetic tests done and everything came out fine. Everything was normal. We were told she was a perfectly healthy baby. Uh, but she wasn't walking and we did more tests and we did a more thorough uh, genetic discovery. It's called the whole, it's called whole exome sequencing, which is not the standard test they do in the hospital. And um, it's very expensive. And if you don't have insurance, it's, it's like $10,000. So a lot of people can't afford to do something like that. Um, we discovered an incredibly rare disease that she has, and it's called MCTO. It stands for multi multicentric carpotarsal osteolysis and it and it's the the breakdown of bones and also the kidneys and so she has lost a number of bones already in her wrists and ankles they're just not there anymore all the little little bones that are kind of the joint bones are are dissolving and being broken down by the body quickly more quickly than they will regenerate um so she's in some pain and she has lost mobility in her legs and her hands. And she's not, her, her, her limbs aren't growing the way they normally grow in, in humans. And um, we found about probably 30 or 40 other individuals across the globe that have been diagnosed with this disease. So it's in, in, incredibly rare. She's the only person in Colorado that we know of that has MCTO. And so there's just very little research. And when we were told about this, we were told that there was nothing we can do that she's going to be in a wheelchair and not be able to use her hands. And, and, you know, and there's just nothing we can do about it. And so we didn't agree with that uh, outcome. And so we started our own foundation and it's called Sophie's neighborhood. The website is Sophie's neighborhood.org. Uh, we're on social media, we're all over the place and we do a lot of fundraising and, uh, and we're a 501 C three nonprofit and all of our, all of the money that we raise goes towards research, towards MCTO. And we have not found a cure, but we have found some, some effective treatment so far. There's a few drugs out there that can that are that were originally prescribed for other diseases that are that we're repurposing for her that seem to help. It seems to be slowing down the progression. Um, there's other children her age that we know of that are completely immobilized and and pretty disfigured and Sophie's still on her feet. She's still using her hands and she's still playing with her friends. And so we do think what we're doing is helping. And we just don't know what the future holds. We don't know what her trajectory looks like. 
And uh, so we're doing a lot of research. We have a lot of funding going on. We've been we've had a tremendous amount of help, both from the scientific community, but also the restaurant community. And uh, some of the same people that are that are cooking on Tuesday and doing this fundraising have done amazing work helping us raise money. And they've been involved in a lot of these events. Uh, Alex Seidel and Cindy Spuntino and just about everybody else on this docket has helped us numerous times with fundraising efforts. Um, and, you know, it's tough. Like we're the we're the restaurateurs and we're the ones that people are always asking us for help. But in this case, we've asked others to help us raise money for Sophie and for the other kids out there with like her that have this disease so we can try to try to stop it. That's all we want to do. We don't expect to reverse what she has, but we just want to stop it completely so she has a, a normal life. God bless you. But I think, Chelsea, you and I both say, I mean, you give me credit. It, it isn't me, Hosea. It's all of you in the restaurant business that are incredible. And we couldn't get the money for gathering so in the food bank if it wasn't for all of you in the restaurant business who don't have the funds to go do it or the time, but somehow or other, they're there for us. And Chelsea, you know more than I do how hard it is. Yeah, no, it's it's huge. And we're, we're incredibly, incredibly grateful. Yeah. So as we end on a happy note, the event is... You. Next day, yeah. September 17th, <laughs> from five to nine. We are sold out this year, but again, you can go on our website, find my information. Um, it's cmanly at foodbankrockies.org if you want to get on the wait list for next year. Um, we are so excited, um, and I think it's just going to be a really beautiful night, and hopefully we um, can get to our goal and raise um, over 750,000 meals for, for folks in our community. So, And that's Botanic Gardens, five o'clock. Denver Botanic Gardens, yes. And yeah, yeah, we should say that. Okay, and as a total aside, I love you both dearly, but anybody who is watching, please like and subscribe to the Gab, G-A-B-B slash Gabby Gourmet on YouTube. I'm just Gabby Gourmet on Facebook and Instagram. And I can't raise money for everyone in the world, but... Thank you, chefs, people who support all the things that are so wonderful to me and what you do for all of us. I mean, love you to death. And Chelsea and Hosea, love you, love you. Thank you both so, for taking the time today. Have a yeah, wonderful weekend. You. See you Tuesday. You next Thanks. week. Okay, bye. I be bye. well. Have a great weekend. Thank you.